everyone, and thank you for joining us in the in the first session of the Untold Stories Women Health, of Women's Health, which will focus this one in this Pareunia. My name is Tamara Real. I'm, I am an international trainer at Indiva and a specialist in pelvic health. Uh, and today we will be joining uh, Fetzke and Malika, uh, which are two subject matter expert, and they are also pioneers in the pelvic uh, floor world in the Netherlands and have been leading uh, the church in pelvic physiotherapy for over uh, 30 years. So if you both want to introduce yourself, let's start with uh, Marijke. Hi, uh, I'm Marijke, that's the Dutch Marijke. Uh, I'm a pelvic physiotherapist for a very long time, uh, growing into the profession because when I started, nothing was there. Uh, and together with my colleague Vetske, we uh, build up the education program at the end, the recognition of our profession. And we have been learning a lot about this whole area. Uh, I have been teaching all my life, and so I'm very happy to share our knowledge with all of you. And um, I did my PhD on pelvic floor um, uh, problems in women. So we also covered that subject also in our in our studies. And uh, we are working also with Indiba for about four or five years now. So it's okay, we have a pelvic floor nice. center. Oh, that's great. I, I remember going there if, I, if I'm not wrong. So, okay. Uh, Fet, you want to introduce? Um, I'm Fetke Hogenes. Uh, I'm also from the Netherlands and I've been working with Marijke Slikker for years. And uh, so it's nice to be in this session together again. I own a pelvic physiotherapy practice for uh, over 30 years and I'm a pelvic pain expert uh, and I have a private cl uh, clinic where I, where I see patients from all over the uh, world that come and seek uh, help for their painful pelvises, pelvic floors. And I've been working with Marijke uh, uh, in education for a long time and uh, I've been teaching all my life as well. Okay, thank you very much, Fetke. Uh, so, since today we are going to focus on this parenia, uh, would you like to introduce a little bit about the about the issue, about uh, this uh, this uh, symptomatology and everything for the people that are seeing now uh, to that they have this information and they have uh, they have the, the good information, no? From um, when I think of uh, patients with dyspareunia, <clears throat> they suffer from pain during intercourse and uh, sometimes they have superficial pain, which means then uh, when the penis is entering the, the vagina, they have superficial burning uh, sensation. Sometimes it's also deep uh, pain into the vagina. And uh, this perunia can occur from the first time people are having sex or can start later in life. And it depends a lot on uh, what the causes are. There can be so many causes. So it's not a patient has this perunia and there is a fixed treatment. So you can solve it. Mm -hmm. Marijke, perhaps you can. Uh, yeah, it's, about it's um, 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 because if you think this prunia is a taboo, uh, the whole pelvic floor is a taboo. So, mm -hmm. um, but having pain during intercourse, that is often very difficult and hard to talk about. Uh, but it's, it's, and we will come later on today to in this, in this whole discussion uh, uh, about the different causes of it. But people are, absolutely often not aware uh, why this problem is there. Why do they have this pain? Why can't they have normal intercourse uh, without any problems? Because they do not understand uh, what is the specific cause. And it's for us by, by talking, by looking, by diagnostic uh, procedures to find out what mm -hmm. the real cause yeah. is before we can start up any treatment. So. The patient doesn't always understand why they have this pain. And that makes it very difficult to go to a doctor and say, I have this perunia, um, okay. help me out. So, and they think so it's very embarrassing to talk about. 
Okay, so I think maybe it's a cultural thing. I am not sure, but um, do you consider that there is still nowadays a taboo for women to have this kind of of yes. problem? Yes, they Look, publicly they don't they don't they feel shame or yes. yeah they don't talk about it. Well, yeah, yeah, they yeah, find it they find it hard to tell a doctor they having they are having pain while having sex people uh, women so, so what would be what would be the reason for them to to ask the doctor about this what what is the main reason the doctor, uh, asking for for this problem or how do they discover this problem normally well uh, i think they they find out because it's painful and when it's painful and and it depends whether they are in a good relationship or and they can can talk about it with their partner and they can seek help together but if the partner does not understand and think that he wants to have sex whether she, she has pain or not then it's harder for the woman to ask for help it can be a okay. relational problem. It, it it's depending how the environment is responding to problems like this. But but when you, you when a patient is talking about pain while having sex, they're talking about the fact that they are sexual active, and that can be an embarrassing topic to discuss. Okay. Plus plus okay, that so they if they have a relationship and it's not working. Um, mm -hmm. And they want to talk about it, <clears throat> even when they talk with their partner, the partner say, you are, I'm not allowing you to talk about that uh, with somebody else. This is private and um, just take something because uh, we don't need anybody. So we don't need help mm -hmm. uh, because the male is at that point saying, nobody knows. Uh, I mean, it's my prestige. So you are not allowed to talk about that with nobody. Okay. okay. So I have one question here in the chat. Uh, for the people that are, that are watching us, please remember that you can um, write all the, all the questions that you want that we will be asking during this this chat with the, with Marika and Fetzke. Um, they are asking me if uh, this kind of problem it's only from the female point of view or if men can also suffer suffer this kind of um, pain during the relationship or it's only for women? No, no, uh, there are a lot of men uh, suffering from pain during sexual activities. They can have pain while having a ejaculation. They can have pain after orgasm. They can have um, pain at the glands of the penis while entering the, uh, the vagina. So uh, it's a it's a male and female problem, but so it's for male, not, it's, it's not just taboo. woman. For male, oh, okay. it's so. a taboo too to okay to tell a doctor that it is not working very well. Okay. Men are mostly more ashamed of telling okay. that, um, they have a problem having sex. In my practice, I see the men are very shy when they when it comes to discussing pain after orgasm. Okay. Um, there is another question asking if this pain it's only during the the penetration or if it can happens after, before, during, or it's only penetration. Um, they can have pain during penetration, uh, but they can also have pain afterwards. It can they can have a burning sensation lasting for hours, sometimes days. Okay, and like when like when you have an infection, maybe. Yeah, that's what we it often feels, see with candida infect uh, yeast infection. Mm -hmm. uh, in people suffering from yeast infection, you see that they might have burning sensation even without something entering the vagina. 
and uh, yeast mm -hmm. infections uh, very often come with uh, overactive pelvic floor muscles, hypertonic pelvic floor, and poor blood flow flow in the vagina. So okay, and poor circulation can also cause uh, a burning sensation. <clears throat> okay. Okay, and this irritation is nice. of the small nerve endings in the vagina. Okay. Uh, and, I, and I think we must realize that uh, we are talking about now about women and about men. Um, mm -hmm. But I think we should also go a little bit earlier in age because young girls mm -hmm. uh, and young boys and boys between 14, 15 and getting sexual active. Uh, girls mm -hmm. who are afraid the first time and uh, uh, don't know what to do and what to expect. Um, mm -hmm. From starting up and a very nice boyfriend that doesn't want to hurt his girlfriend and doesn't understand what's going on, um, that doesn't help to get it better. So they will come in a kind of uh, circle, continuous circle. Um, mm -hmm. What we see also, for example, for women who deliver the baby and can have sex after six to eight weeks after pregnancy, after delivery, and they think, oh my God, this is going to be painful. This is going to be painful. And then they are so tensed that intercourse mm -hmm. is very painful. So they can so a confirmation. So it has and a, it a psychological impact, and you understand? Absolutely, absolutely. So their muscles are so hypertonic that it's it's going to be painful. So the male is very uh, uh, hesitating because he don't mm -hmm. want it to to cause pain for her, but mm -hmm. also really is eager to have this uh, happening again. So there is there is some circle going on, uh, what makes it difficult. So. If you have this prunia, it can come in all ages. It can also okay, come so, in so very late I have, I have to, to ask you, in your experience, uh, what is the, the general profile from a patient that comes with, uh, with pain during the, the sexual intercourse, more or less? There is no. There is not really there is a profile. No profile. No, there is not a profile, and it's more that uh, Fetz and I, uh, we are used to do a very extended uh, history taking um, to find out what are possible causes. So we are going back into the timeline since when, uh, what happened at that time, how was your life at that time, are there psychological factors, is there abuse, uh, did they have a safe environment when they grew up? Um, mm -hmm. Are they being um, uh, problems at school that mm -hmm. children are playing with them? Um, so there is so much that they don't even realize. Eh? It's not, mm -hmm. not only that they don't want to talk about it, they do not realize that if they are growing up in not in a safe environment with an abusive parent mm -hmm. or with an abusive brother or uncle or whatever, they do not realize that these mm -hmm. things altogether can cause this. So it's for us mm -hmm. finding out um, what is the real cause of it. And if you have the cause, then you can start up to find a kind of profile that you can say, okay, this group is belonging to this, this group is belonging to that. Depending on the psychological causes, and uh, well, Fetz, I, can, I think you can add it, uh, uh, in part of the causes that they are. So I see also a lot of patients with traumatic surgery, traumatic mm -hmm. diagnostics in hospital, uh, mm -hmm. uh, elder women who have their hormone uh, hormone issues. Mm -hmm. So it's... <laughs> in fact, now that, you, that, so now, it's that you mentioned, now that you mentioned older women, there is a comment over here that says, uh, I have this kind of pain since I started menopause. Is this normal? Uh, can it be can it be treated or is it is it forever? <laughs> is it no. forever? <laughs> so I don't know if we can if we can save this this woman. Yeah. No. Yeah. What? Well, it, in, uh, with aging, uh, lubrication of the vagina uh, and the, the skin is getting thinner. 
But uh, a lot of gynecologists also used to say, if you don't use it, you lose it. So if the frequency of the sexual activity is decreasing, then there is um, less need for the tissue to respond to sexual stimulus. So okay. there is two things. It, there is the lubrication and there is the, mm -hmm. the skin that is changing due to hormonal uh, changes that comes with menopause. And you can, for that, you can use a lubrication. Mm -hmm. And you also need a, a, a relaxed pelvic floor. So in a lot of uh, mm -hmm. situations with it, uh, these uh, menopausal women, there is the, the problem that the skin is thin so and the lubrication is poor. So then it hurts. It, it's not uh, sliding very well. And uh, okay. because of that, it, it's hurting and they start to tense their muscles. So they, be, they come also into a vicious circle because they know it's going to hurt. So they start tensioning their muscles and it will hurt even more. So they are confirmed in it's going to be painful. It's more painful every time. But this can very well be addressed with pelvic physiotherapy in combination, sometimes with hormonal suppletion uh, therapy. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot to do about it. And okay. it so starts this is, with good. This is great. It, yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm I'm just thinking. Um, for example, uh, women that has gone that, that, that they are gone. Uh, through some oncological treatment, it could be more or less the same. They could have the same problems if, if they are doing uh, cardio or radio, uh, cardio, um, radiotherapy, yeah. chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was talking yeah. in Spanish. <laughs> uh, it would be more or less the same, no? Because the tissue gets a little bit damaged. Is, is it possible that they can develop some some pain during the yeah the sexual intercourse? Yeah, well, we, we know that radiotherapy uh, um, decreases the flexibility and the circulation of uh, uh, of the tissue. So there is a lot of issues extra okay. for that, but mm -hmm. in general. If we are looking for profiles for for patients with dyspareunia, I think we need to find out what the reasons are. So, is there a psychological reason? And you can think about trauma. Uh, mm -hmm. A surgery can be traumatic, uh, but also uh, the environment, uh, sexual abuse, uh, all that that whole group. You have mm -hmm. a group that's more a physical problem that yeah. you can find out that there are tissues that are damaged, um, uh, that not well circulated anymore. But there is also another group and um, of more the mm -hmm. orthopedic, more the functional body uh, um, and the stability of the core. Uh, what we see in a lot of our patients that there is an issue too. And well, we decided FETCA should, should explain that. So it's Mm -hmm. But these are the three big groups if you, you talk about causes. Annika, can you repeat it because you got frozen? Uh, you have three different big groups of profiling uh, a patient with dyspareunia. So one group is the psychological part. Yeah. If you have uh, trauma, abuse, uh, uh, lots of stress, uh, this corona time gives people a lot of stress, losing their jobs, losing their loved ones. So that mm -hmm. gives a lot of stress. Um, so that can be one part of it. There is another part that's more the physical. So there have mm -hmm. been surgery, there have been less uh, estrogen, what's make it for the, the women in, in menopause. Um, we find some damaged tissue also about after radiology. And there is the other group that is more uh, the mechanical. Uh, uh, the mechanical part, uh, which is okay. um, a core part. And what we, we Fet and I um, and decided that she will talk also about that part. Um, but these are the three big groups if you start 
profiling uh, by mm -hmm. by course. And if you have, can profile by course, then you have the first step to proper diagnostics and proper treatment. But first, the the, the okay. core. And in, in traumatized patients, it's very important that you do a lot of education about their situation, mm -hmm. that it's completely normal that after abuse, you are scared, there is pain, mm -hmm. and that sometimes you need to invest in good information about how sexology works. Sexual activity should never be, be uh, something that you have to do if you don't want to. Okay, Every so, is so is it, can you first start up with the, the, the musculoskeletal yeah. part to give our three pilots? Uh, yeah. So one of the things that I see in my pelvic pain clinic very, very often is that um, there are young girls suffering from dyspareunia and mm -hmm. vaginal pain, and um, they have been to a doctor, and the doctor says, well, probably this is because you started to become sexual active, you're not used to it right now, and sometimes at the beginning it can be a little bit painful. Uh, mm -hmm. What these women uh, mention usually when you take history, they say that they were having a hard time introducing a tampon, for example, that okay. that was also very hard, and it did not have to do anything with sexual activity, but it was always hard for them to introduce something into the vagina. When they seek mm -hmm. medical help, the first things that occur is overactive pelvic floor, but also mm -hmm. psychological aspects. So in the Netherlands, people are referred, patients are referred to a sexologist. Okay. They get information about how sexology works. They get exercises to relax their pelvic floors. And that's what pelvic physios do too. But when you deal with a pelvic floor that has been there even for before they started to become sexual active, and they tell you that they are always uh, having a hard time introducing a tampon in the vagina, then mm -hmm. it's important to look after the cause of this overactivity, this hypertonicity of the pelvic floor muscles. And um, like every other muscle in the whole body, no muscle is meant to be hyper hypertonic out of itself. Mm -hmm. There should be a cause. So okay. um, <clears throat> in the literature, the role of the pelvic floor <clears throat> is mainly described like a muscle that has uh, that works together with the organs. Like uh, it has to prevent the bladder from leaking and it has to prevent the bowel from losing stool. Mm -hmm. um, and it has to support the organs. But that's only one function of the pelvic floor muscle. The pelvic floor muscles are also part of the inner core, the stabilizing muscles of the spine, the pelvis and the hip joints. And those muscles are uh, the muscles surrounding the abdominal cavity with on top the diaphragm, the bottom, the pelvic floor, at the uh, ventral side, the transverse abdominal muscles and at the, in the back, the multifidae. And mm -hmm. those muscles, the, the transverse abdominal and the multifidae should give a pre-contraction before any movement we make. And if there's mm -hmm. a problem in coordination, for example, uh, in uh, women who have laxity of connective tissue due to uh, hormonal uh, changes, then you see mm -hmm. that there's they get poor stability and they mention having low back pain in the SI joint region. They are tired when they have to stand for a prolonged time. They are tired when they have to walk very slowly, when they bend forward, all kind of symptoms that come with stability. 
And what mm -hmm. we see if if their inner core muscles are not working well together, that pelvic floor and or diaphragm is uh, tending to compensate for uh, lack of function of, of the other muscles. So a pelvic floor muscle can be very tight in order mm -hmm. to help stabilizing uh, the spine. And if you do not address that, then a patient is um, referred into a direction with sexologists, with psychologists, when at the beginning, nothing psychological was wrong because it was a mechanical problem. And in, okay. in pelvic physiotherapy, there's a lot of studies going about the relationship between the organs and the pelvic floor, but the research being done in uh, the direction of the pelvic floor as a stabilizer is often not integrated. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, that, and, and I think it's it's interesting because yeah. I don't know um, in here in Spain when we go um, um, approaching no a, a matter like this. Uh, normally, uh, many people uh, do investigation about the problem on the internet or they are referred by friends, but um, nowadays we are starting to have this. Uh, kind of patients referred by a, by a doctor because they know that uh, physiotherapy uh, in the pelvic floor works because of this, because what you were saying, you know that um, it has a, a connection between uh, not just the pelvic floor, but all the all the muscles around and everything. So it, it needs to to have a normal tone. And I, I am curious because I don't know in here it works like it, it works like this, but I don't know in uh, in uh, in the Netherlands, how do you do in this case? Which which is the itinerary for the for the patient to follow until they reach the the the, the, the right person, no? The sexologist, the physiotherapist. How do yeah, you work? Well, they they follow. They fully. Sometimes that's why we say that your history taking is so very important that you can find your timeline. If mm -hmm. I work in the university, we see on the screen the timeline of a patient. And then we can see if there was surgery, other what kind of intervention has been done. There was a lot going on, uh, trauma, um, uh, just an accident by car on a bike. Um, and in the area of the, the, the motor control problems, the motor control impairment, as we, we discuss, um, let's not forget the coccidemia, because there is a lot of pelvic floor and gluteal maximum uh, muscles who are attached to that gluteal area too. So also there is a kind of vicious circle. People do not even have to have a sexual or, or a, a whatever physical trauma uh, by falling on their coccyx or falling from the stairs, just no trauma at all and still have pain in that area because that pelvic floor is every time too overactive, uh, too hypertonic. So mm -hmm. there is not one... Uh, 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 itinerary, uh, itinerary for for the patient with um, uh, dyspareunia. So mm -hmm. we see them uh, who are calling us and say, <clears throat> "I need to talk about this because uh, my relation is is on stake." Um, mm -hmm. We see patients coming from midwives. We mm -hmm. see them from colleagues. We see them from the psychologist or the sexologist. We see them from uh, uh, our gynecologists, uh, mm -hmm. our surgeons, um, a manual therapist. So there is not one way um, uh, ticket to the moon. Let's let we say like that. So mm -hmm. there is there is a lot of different parts. But people are looking on the internet. People are searching for themselves in. Well, we need to find a way for them. But what Fetzke said in the beginning, we do a lot on education, education for the patient uh, by social media. But when they come to us, we sit down with the patient and we talk and we give them information and we keep repeating that until they understand what's going on. And if they understand what's going on in their body, and we discuss a treatment protocol, then it's still up to the patient if they say, okay, 
I'm going for it. But mm -hmm. I think Pets and I both see a lot of patients with pain areas uh, will swipe away our our explanation and say, oh, no, that's not true. Oh, no, no, that's not true. So mm -hmm. <laughs> education, education is so very important. And in the Netherlands, uh, patients can come directly to our offices. They don't need to be referred. So that is uh, since a very long time. And that sometimes uh, helps patients to seek uh, help sooner because they sometimes are too embarrassed to uh, discuss it with their doctors. Okay. But we okay. also educate our colleague, manual therapists, sports physiotherapists, geriatric physiotherapists, uh, um, even in the, uh, uh, in the children's area, in the pediatric area, we keep educating, educating, educating. So there, there is um, a lot of lack of knowledge in the general physiotherapy area. This area okay. of the pelvic floor is ignored. Um, um, I don't know why, but it's not in the profile, it's not in the education program. So we are working very hard to get that introduced. You know, it's, it's, yeah, I think we both do a lot of education and every time are surprised about the lack of knowledge there is in the field. Okay, so um, I'm wondering uh, what, of the, what does the treatment consist of? Uh, how do you approach the disparity in these cases? How do you do? Um, uh, as we put a lot of, of emphasis on, we, we start with doing, uh, taking history, uh, explain how the area is functioning normally. And then after uh, taking history, we do a physical evaluation, like an internal exam. And um, uh, in my office, I also use ultrasound and EMG to get a, a good idea of what the pelvic floor function is and to see if there are any nerve problem, if there is skin problem, if there is muscle dysfunction, whether it's poor function or coordination uh, or really spasm or hypertonicity. Mm -hmm. And then when I really get an idea and when I think it's mechanical, we do also uh, an evaluation of the back, of the core, uh, all the joints around the pelvis, all the muscle, external muscles as well, they can contribute to. And then we start, the first thing to start with is awareness to help mm -hmm. the patient find their muscles. and. We can do that by by giving instruction with our fingers internally. Um, since three years, I have the Indiba, which is very helpful and very comfortable for a patient in the area by by applying some warmth and uh, relaxation. So by warming their pelvic floors, it's easier for them to feel where the muscles are and it's comfortable, so it helps them to relax. And it also improves the blood flow, which is mm -hmm. often poor. So I use that because simply because I have it. When I did not have it, I, I did it in another way, but now I use uh, Indiba for that purpose because you can use it externally you don't have to go directly into the vagina and it's it's comfortable it's nice for the patient so awareness mm -hmm. is the first thing because if you don't feel the area there's nothing you can change okay but if you if you go back to the three pilots the three groups that we had the psychological the more physical and the more uh, core uh, uh, stability. If you go to the psychological part, again, 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 that is why we do such an extensive uh, history taking. If there's any mm -hmm. trauma in that area, we are not going into no. the vagina. So we stay out. We do not want the next one to traumatize them. Mm -hmm. We must realize that these patients do not have any line that we can cross because everybody already crossed that line. They are already raped. They are already having disrespect uh, for their privacy. So 
we as, as caregivers need to learn them to respect their own boundaries, boundaries again. So we are not the first ones say, okay, now we have to do a vaginal exam. We are staying out. So Good it point. Is, <laughs> is, yeah, um, uh, I'm very eager always on that point because they often say pelvic physiotherapists, oh, you are doing all intervagina. And it is not true. And for me, um, you know, it's it's if you it's are mine. if you are allowed to touch their abdomen. That's point one. If you are having so much confidence with a patient that they feel safe in their environment, there is no okay. sound, there is no door that can uh, uh, get open if they are in the treatment area that we are together and we are in mm -hmm. a safe area. And then there's the point coming that the patient allows me to touch their abdomen um, mm -hmm. area. Then we can introduce to help them find the muscle by breathing, by feeling, because they don't want to feel there. Their not, feeling there is painful, painful to the memories. So to turn that on in a positive way, we need a psychologist, mm -hmm. a sexologist also. But we start often with a with a, a psychologist. But if you are allowed to touch that abdomen, you can put your hand on it, and that feels okay for that patient then we can introduce, in our case, uh, the Indiba uh, in the lower part of the abdomen and help them by breathing and feeling and mentioning and experience that if they breathe down there, it feels more okay. It's, it is an experience they, they, they never had because it was all locked up, you know? So it's, mm -hmm. but it needs to be time. The, the time needs to be right. If you want to do this in a very early stage, you are traumatizing again. Sometimes you even are, I have to stay an hour, an, an, an one step, one and a half meter, corona mm -hmm. distance on your patient because they, they, they are too much locked up. So then we really need a psychologist to make the first steps and to learn them that there are also nice people in the world, but have to make the steps and if the time is not right, mm -hmm. we wait and we say, okay, this is not the right moment. Perhaps mm -hmm. we have to do this later on. I had a couple of weeks ago a woman who lost her daughter by a car accident. Okay. And the doctor sent her to me and it was three months afterwards. Okay. She was completely locked up and it, complete in, in her, her uh, grief. And the doctor said, okay, you go to the physio, she can help you relax. It doesn't work. The time is not right. She needs to heal. She needs to have more time with herself to mourn, to, to, to start to find life again. And if mm -hmm. then we have some rest problems, then she is on one time ready to go. And if mm -hmm. you get your pelvic floor more relaxed, we must realize that a lot of emotions are coming up again. So mm -hmm. relaxing means also a kind of door is getting open to get a lot of emotions. And that's why Fats and I work a lot with the psychologist, with these safe environments. We take time for our patients. Uh, we have lots of tissues in our, in our room because they need to be healed and they need to be safe feeling safe that is the most important part and for me uh, it's not, be not because this is an, an indiba uh, uh, initiative but yes. for me with the indiba i can start up earlier and to give them the comfort and let them experience what it is to relax their pelvic floor this is this safe. is nice i have i have someone asking is this something that can be prevented somehow can you prevent to be uh, sexually prevent, abused? Prevent dysporenia. Can, can, the, can dysporenia be dis prevented somehow uh, by hydration, by anything? Well, I, think, I think that what might be helpful, I don't think in, in all cases you can prevent it, but uh, I think good information in the society about having pain during sex is not normal and you should seek help for that. And 
more information about pelvic floor and that a pelvic floor muscle can cause pain when it's too tight and that there's pelvic physios able to help them. Because um, if you never heard of it, it's hard to find someone who can help you. Yeah. So I think it's that prevention would would start, in my opinion, with more education in the society, not all the articles in the fancy magazines saying how nice sex is and that you can do it five times a day and it doesn't hurt. <laughs> they need to hear the truth and that yeah. not everybody is having in, in the northern countries <laughs> is having sex all day. You no, know, no, I don't think I don't think we even do it in Spain. So <laughs> no, really, <laughs> we are you in the suit, but I, I don't think. <laughs> no, you know, but it's it's also we must realize that uh, we cannot prevent sexual abuse. We would love to, but we have a Me Too movement. But there is still a lot of work to go for. Where we can think about prevention is in the period of pregnancy uh, and delivery, postpartum care. Mm -hmm. Education, education, education. When you starting having sex again, let's first make it with your ratio. Can you, uh, don't be afraid, but relax your muscle. Relax, relax. Wait for the coaches, but make it relaxing um, so that you can have the confirmation that it's okay again. So mm -hmm. education, education, education. That's still going on. Women in the in their um, um, menopausal period are uh, having less estrogen. You don't you not all alone give them a suppletion of hormones. You need to give them education. You know that's that's the point every time again that women should explain to their children um, and talk about the pelvic floor, uh, just like they talk and explain also about about uh, uh, the honey and the bees and the flowers mm -hmm. um, they need to talk about their own pelvic floor problems uh, in general mm -hmm. to explain that that is a normal deal a normal thing to talk about so it's it's every time again education and that's well, we love education, so that's what you can find in our uh, in our rooms too. When we are busy with patients, a lot of time is going on to that because often patients do not have a clue. Mm -hmm. The the woman with the menopause that asked before is asking now yeah. if um, with uh, lubrication and uh, some technologies and some kind of cream that has. Mm -hmm. Has like an anesthetic, I think. Um, can it be solved or it takes more time? Well, you need lubrication. Mm -hmm. You need a proper pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. So these are the two steps that you go for. But um, it's also you need the desire too. That's what I want to say. Your your uh, uh, anxiety is not uh, the same if you are in that period, and you know it's. It's with sex, I always explain to patients, you need more time to get mm -hmm. more lubrication. Mm -hmm. and the male, the elder male, doesn't have that time. Okay. He needs to have to be shorter mm -hmm. and she needs more time. So mm -hmm. something <laughs> is not wrong and not right in the balance and they both need to understand that. Okay, uh, so she, she needs to take more time doing... Yeah, and uh, and I think in addition, it's very good to work on her circulation in her vagina. And you can do that by uh, pelvic floor muscle exercises. And I, again, use Indiva, internal mm -hmm. uh, treatment, to get a better... Um, to improve the tissue quality and to improve circulation and that is that is helping my uh, uh, pelvic physiotherapy uh, tools that I have with my hands and to get uh, faster results. Okay, so well, no, no anesthetic cream, no? No, no. <laughs> and, and the younger women postpartum and they had episiotomies. 
um, it's the same. Then you have a physical component that makes them um, frightened to have intercourse again. So then we're coming back to that vicious, vicious circle again. Okay. Okay. So um, changing a little bit uh, the topic. Um, what are the requirements or, or what characteristics do you think that uh, a, physio cl uh, a physiotherapy clinic uh, needs to meet in, 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 in order to treat this kind of uh, pathology or this kind of patient? What I are the requirements? That, that uh, physiotherapists need uh, a good education. So they have to do courses on the topic so that they know what can go wrong in this area, what indications are um, for pelvic physiotherapists to treat. So they need a good education. They have to have knowledge of the anatomy, physiology, the, the viscerals in the, in, the, um, in the region. And then they need um, a good environment where uh, the therapist and the patient cannot be disturbed. There is, um, you need a, a, a table to examine them on. Uh, you need, uh, in my clinic, I have ultrasound, I have EMG, and I use Indiba. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I have a Swiss ball, I have uh, an exercise, a yoga mat. Uh, sometimes I use uh, Dynabands, I use uh, weights to, for the treatment. But the, the main thing is having uh, good education so that you know where you, what, you, what you are doing and that you also know where to stop and where to ask help for the doctor. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think uh, in the process in, in the Netherlands, the education program to become a pelvic physiotherapist is three years. And uh, in those three years, you learn them also uh, to develop their antennas. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a lot of experience and the younger ones need to build up that experience as we started also uh, uh, with nothing. Um, but you need to develop your antennas that if you have you, you you get your patient from um, from the waiting room, mm -hmm. and she's and or he is sitting in front of you. That you already know something is going on here, mm -hmm. by their their movements, by the way they move, by their sitting, by their whole uh, way they present themselves. That we get a weird feeling in our stomach that we say, okay. We need to be very careful without knowing anything of the patient. Some alarm is going on that we say, OK, we have to keep distance. We need to give them space. Um, that's that's a process that you can't learn in, in a training from a day or two. They have to experience that step by step, uh, reflect on that, reflect their own situation. If you realize that um, 40% of women have negative sexual experiences. Mm -hmm. Not they are all not all abuse, but 40% of that group of 40% has mm -hmm. um, painful intercourses, traumatic intercourses, and violence. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge group. So also the students on pelvic physiotherapy who are already physio, we as teachers always have that antenna going on, always asking their process of uh, reflection, write down, what is your feeling? How are you going to do that? Also, when we prepare them on the vaginal exam, because mm -hmm. statistically, you always have a few students who have their own traumatic experiences, you know, and they can be very helpful, um, yeah. but they have to go through it. Um, mm -hmm. So we are very eager uh, in our education programs that we are very careful that we are not damaging these mm -hmm. students because they can be very valuable. Mm -hmm. um, but if you understand that process, you also understand how vulnerable your patients often are. And you are the one that needs to find a way to create a very safe environment. And um, 
you need a lot of training uh, on mm -hmm. all the different subjects, but after three years, you are only starting and your process of learning is still going on with trainings like this, but also trainings, uh, training on the job, um, practical training, uh, mm -hmm. webinars, whatever is possible, uh, mm -hmm. hands-on training. There is so much that we still need to learn that also Fetz and I are learning from every speaker again. And we say, oh, okay. And now I need to find a way to put it into my my own clinic, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's there is a lot going on. So yeah, what is um, the approach? What is the treatment? Again, what... What is the course? Try to find out the course first in the timeline. And mm -hmm. if we have a clear timeline and we have a clear course, then often the physios, the pelvic physiotherapist is making a plan. Okay. Uh, that plan it's can be you go to the gynecologist, that plan mm -hmm. can be go to the physio, go to a manual therapist, go to a psychologist, mm -hmm. uh, go to an anesthesiologist that uh, does a lot of work with the anesthesiology. Mm -hmm. So, there is no one way. There, I, I, think, place. I think there's something I'd like to add uh, for the requirements for becoming a pelvic physio. It's very important that you are part of a multidisciplinary network, that you have good contacts to the doctors you work with, because okay. a, pelvic, a, a pelvic floor problem can never be solved by one person as it is a multidisciplinary area. So it is a multidisciplinary uh, a problem. And it's usually the pelvic physiotherapy who, who, uh, therapist who is addressing all the topics that are related to pelvic floor. So they can uh, find out whether they need a gynecologist or they need a sexologist because they, because they've addressed all the topics. Mm -hmm. So um, there are many, many physios that are asking uh, which would be the specific uh, training program from this uh, for this specialty. So do you have any hints for these physios as how to start working, not just with the, with the, all the technology, but um, how to work on, on topics on pelvic floor, what, what are the, the steps they need to follow in order to become a proper uh, physiotherapy uh, specialized in, in pelvic floor. So it would start with courses, with a, a master, how do you think? Well, it, it depends probably, on the country. It's depending on the country where we, where, where we are talking about and it's um, um, we developed it in the Netherlands and it took us many years mm -hmm. um, before we get the recognition and the acceptance that we were due vaginal exams. It was in our country a big thing uh, and it's all well arranged now. Um, there is a profile of a pelvic physiotherapist and based on that profile we made an education program and by mm -hmm. now these are master, uh, master of science uh, uh, degrees where you, you, know, you need to do the science part and you need to do um, yeah, well, the part of the pelvic physiotherapy. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is three years now uh, after your physiotherapy. Um, I think a proper education is what you as physio need uh, and what your patients deserve. So mm -hmm. but we, can, we can make it um, very clear because we did it our way and every country has their own ways. Um, there are countries where nurses are doing most of the jobs and while they do not have uh, a, um, a musculoskeletal education, uh, there are midwives who are doing our job. Um, and sometimes you are in a country that you are even happy that there is some caregiver that knows a little bit about the pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. So for us, we can talk very easily. We have all the equipment. We can do a good examination. We can do proper diagnostics and we can have the overview. We can call uh, our, our medical specialist very easily. Um, 
but that's not the same in every country. But what Fed said that you need to build up your own multidisciplinary group. Every multidisciplinary pelvic floor center in our country started with two, just mm -hmm. two professionals. Sometimes it was a radiologist and a gastroenterologist. Sometimes it's a physio and a gynecologist. Sometimes mm -hmm. a physio and a urologist. You need two to start to make the difference. And mm -hmm. that's a building process. So you shouldn't get yourself uh, uh, thinking, oh God, nothing is possible. But you need to find uh, a companion in your area that you can say we are going for it and we are looking for courses and we try to find out what we can do, what we can get abroad, what we can do on webinars. There's so much going on at this moment. Mm -hmm. But it's looking, it, it's also the organization with their own organization of pelvic physiotherapy or the physiotherapy organization in every country that has a specialty, eh, like the, the women's health uh, sections there are. The IOPTWH, what's a part of the WCPT. So every country has something, but mm -hmm. not all the education programs are the same. So, but if you want to do um, a proper diagnostics, you need to be trained in a vaginal exam and in an anal exam. If you want to do a proper part to do your motor control, you need your ultrasound, you know, you mm -hmm. need your myofeedback also to explain the patient. So, but if there is nothing available, mm -hmm. if there is no money and yeah. you are working in a very poor area and there is one nurse who does a little, knows a little bit about the pelvic floor, then that's what you have to deal with, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's 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 really depending uh, per country, and don't think it was an easy job in the Netherlands. We have been struggling for this, I think, since the 80s. Fit was it something like that that we started? 1991. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Well, it's it's uh, more than 30 years. Um, yeah. But we, you have to start somewhere. If nobody started it, we didn't have anything now. So we had a group of medical specialists and a couple of physios who mm -hmm. started up and were enthusiastic and put all their, 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 their effort in it. Um, and that's what you need. You need some partners anywhere. And we are, Fats and I are often used in foreign countries to do training, to do uh, mm -hmm. uh, support them. You know, there, there is a lot possible. And sometimes you need to get it from abroad now. Well, no problem, mm -hmm. and especially now in this time. Um, but there, there is a lot going on in the world. Um, and there's a lot going on in the women's health. Mm -hmm. But just start where you can. Start with the beginning. And realize that your diagnostic is the most important part. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um... So, um, I don't know if you have anything else to to add about this perennial. Well, I think Fitz, if you explain a little bit what you do with the uh, the motor control impairment, because that is a part that every physio, in principle, can 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 start with. Mm -hmm. Well. Um, when it happens that a patient has a, a motor control uh, problem, that those muscles of the inner core surrounding the abdominal cavity are not working very, very well together, then we start with a, a training. First, also the awareness. Uh, mm -hmm. They have to become aware of what their muscles surrounding the pelvis are doing, whether they are able to breathe while um, doing transfers, if they are able to feel their pelvic floors and they can relax it and they can relax it during uh, lifting one leg and we use the biofeedback in uh, daily activities to see sometimes 
when there is motor control problem and you you put a patient on the table and you measure the EMG, then they are completely relaxed. Mm -hmm. But while doing daily activities, sometimes the pelvic floor muscle is compensating a lot. And if you only look at the patient being on the table, not doing anything, then you might miss a serious part of the problem. So we're looking uh, at the pelvic floor muscles while being active, doing abdominal exercises. A lot of women hate their belly, so they start doing a lot of abdominal exercises. And that can also end up with dyspareunia because when you do too much abdominal training, it can affect also the tone of your pelvic floor muscles. Mm -hmm. So basically, it when you're dealing with dyspareunia, you think of you you in in a lot of cases you'll find a hypertonic pelvic floor. But then it's important to know, to ask yourself the question, why is this pelvic floor overactive? Is it because the patient has pain and is scared to have anything put in her vagina? Or is it a mechanical problem that she has had for all, uh, many years, but she wasn't aware of it? And it is something that has something to do with her motor control, so she needs motor control retraining. Mm -hmm. And if it's because of, of sexual abuse, then there is a lot uh, that needs to be done in a psychological way and to see if it's possible finally to treat her also in the pelvic area if she allows us to do that but mm -hmm. it it is all about why is this muscle overactive is okay. it because of anxiety is it because of a lot of stress because there are a lot of high achievers uh wanting to be the best and don't have time to care for themselves. They There are a lot of high educated women with very, very tight pelvic floor muscles. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what the cause of the muscle is, but don't think that overactivity of the pelvic, the pelvic floor muscle is the cause. There can be a cause behind this overactivity of in the in the pelvic floor muscles. And that is what I see very often in my pelvic pain clinic that patients have been treated only um, with exercises to relax their pelvic floor, but they were not able to do so because the um, uh, the cause of the overactivity was not addressed in the therapy. Okay. And so my main message would be don't think overactivity of the pelvic floor, don't think hypertonicity is the cause. And if you solve it, you have to ask yourself, why is this pelvic floor hypertonic and what can I do to solve that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything, anything else you want to add? Yeah, it, it's a wonderful profession being a pelvic physiotherapist. I yes, really I can, love I can my tell. job every day. I can tell. I, and I, I, love love, also. I love my patients and I love the new technology we have to help us as well. Okay, so, um, well, we have uh, still many questions being sent through, but uh, we have answered as many as possible within the time that we have today. And uh, all, the, all of the remaining questions will be uh, answered uh, after this session in the meantime. Uh, and you can find also more information by visiting the pelvic uh, health um, treatment page on our website. And uh, if you have any specific treatment questions, please uh, I think that uh, it's okay for you to send us uh, your questions by the training email address that you will have it uh, in the end. And I don't know, ladies, if you need to talk about anything else, but I think everything was talked. And I, I think, think I think everything was 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 discussed. I think the main the main um, especially the main issues that we would like to address. Um, they were very clear, I think. And if there are questions, I think we both are happy to answer them uh, if you send them through. 
mm -hmm. because not everything can take in this uh, this hour. And um, yeah, you know, it's it's sometimes um, uh, a, a big struggle to find causes, but the more tools you have in your education, uh, the better you go. And the more tools, it's the best for the patients and satisfying for you as a, as a physiotherapist too. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Thank don't you. hesitate to ask questions. And if uh, uh, colleagues are starting with the profession, there are always more advanced physiotherapists who are willing to help. Ask for help. Like the patients with dyspareunia, if the physio is not uh, experienced enough, ask colleagues because we're here to help the patient and to help each other. That's right. So um, I think uh, this is all for today. And thank you very much for joining me in this conversation. You're welcome. Uh, I think it was very interesting, very helpful for everyone. And uh, thank you both for, for being here. It was Have a pleasure. Nice day. Thank you for the invitation. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.